thought I'd make a video on adjusting the valves on the air-cooled Volkswagen. I'm sure there's other videos out there that cover this subject, but maybe there'll be something here that one of you out there can put to use for yourself. Here's the tools we'll be using. We've got the 30 millimeter wrench for turning the engine. We've got the feeler gauge for measuring the valve clearances. We've got the padded screwdriver for taking the valve cover bales off. 13 millimeter wrench for loosening and tightening the adjuster lock nuts and a couple of different length screwdrivers for turning the adjusters. So looking at the valve cover, I think step one is turn your car into a Baja bug so you have plenty of room to work. I'll take the valve cover off with my padded screwdriver. It's about time to repaint these valve covers but that's not going to be part of today's project. Owing till the owing to the slant of the street, we're gonna have a lot of oil leakage here, which I'm catching in the valve cover. So I think the main point of my exercise today is to illustrate the action of the valves is all you need to position the crankshaft for adjusting each cylinder's valves. What to look for is a pattern of first the exhaust valve then the intake valve. So I can see this intake valve is closing. I can assume that the exhaust valve closed before it. As I'm watching this intake valve it's closed now so I bring the crankshaft pulley around to top dead center, turning the crank in the engine direction. Maybe we can get that on the camera. So I saw the intake valve close. I bring the pulley up to top dead center. Now I can adjust this cylinder. It happens to be number one. So I take the feeler gauge, check that there's clearance, but not too much clearance. Wow, this is significant. It looks like we have to loosen number one. So I'll put the wrench on the adjusting nut and loosen that. Turn the adjuster a little bit. You know, this first, first position is kind of a guess. Now we've got a much bigger clearance there. I can get the feeler gauge in, or before I could not. But it feels very loose. I'm going to tighten it up just a tiny bit from, from this position. This engine more or less has been pretty stable in terms of holding the valve adjustment. I'm doing this about every 3,000 miles. So this is surprising. I don't know if it's alarming, but it's surprising. Sorry if my hands are blocking the camera. I'm just sensing how tight the, the blade is in there. I think this is the position I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with here. I've tightened the lock nut and the blades in there kind of snug. I'll have to be sure and take a look at this in another 3,000 miles. So again, back to turning the crankshaft. Now you can keep it here. We got to exhaust.
Oh. And the intake. The intake is closed. Now we can swing around here and get the, the pulley. Take the, the camera and pull it. Once we see that intake valve close, just bring the engine up to top dead center. Now for this method to work, you need a mark on both ends of the pulley. Essentially at zero and at 180. When I painted this, I lost the numbers, but I know one is zero and one's 180. You do need a mark. It doesn't have to be very precise for this, but you do need a mark on both ends of the pulley for this method to work. So now I'm back to checking the clearances with the feeler gauge, and this looks fine. This also looks fine, but I'm glad we caught that number one exhaust valve starting to tighten up and backed it off a little bit. So I'm actually going to slap the valve cover back on and depend on my full flow oil filtration system to capture any dirt that might have rinsed off of that heater box might seem a little crude but I don't really baby this project I am gonna wipe around here it really is time to paint another set of valve covers and add some new gaskets so I can just slap them on of course this will be dripping for a while maybe I'll Put a paper towel there. So the valve cover goes back on, and here comes the padded screwdriver, and we slide that all the way up. You want to make sure that the valve cover is fully seated on the head. I've more than once had it be cockeyed and had a huge oil leak that I. discovered on the way somewhere and both times had to fix far from home so once again without taking the distributor cap off or even considering the ignition if you watch the action of the valves and if you have two marks on your crankshaft pulley you can adjust the valves with just that information. Thank you and be sure to watch my other videos as well.